All right, guys, so I have never done a video for this before, and I'm not exactly sure how to go about it, but right now I'm holding my camera over the picture or the canvas that I started. I started the bottom part of it. I decided that I want to do something that reminds me of grass and flowers. Now, remember, this is an abstract, so it does not have to be representational at all but I just had that idea in mind so I decided to do the bottom I didn't have a lot of green left I'm trying to use up the paint that I have and I only had a couple of greens I had that light moss green and then the dark green so I added some yellow and peach in there and I did a pour and I'll show you how I did it in a minute but one of the things that I did was I experimented with that silicone I told you about and I sprayed the canvas before I actually put the paint down. You can see cells in there now. If you know what I mean by the cells, it's this little, these little tiny cells right here and over here. But those are not big cells. I have other paintings that I've done that have big round cells, like, you know, anywhere from this big to this big. And so. First of all, I don't know how good this silicone is going to work because it's just something I found in the house. I did order some silicone, so I'm going to try the kind that they um, recommended on, on another painting. But this is pretty cool, anyway, starting out. And what I'm going to do with the top of the canvas, this is a 16 by 20, so um, I wanted to just do the bottom part with the green. And then I'm going to go up here and do the rest with some nice, bright colors. Um, some purples and reds and I have actually have this um, this red that I showed you before that's metallic so I want, really want to use that but I'm going to show you how to do a pour oh so this is working out okay now I know how to do this all right so the, there's many different ways to do a pour I don't even know what this kind of pour is called but I'll just show you how you do it okay I'm going to do layers I'm going to start with some of that nice it's actually like a hot pink but it's almost red I'm going to start with that in the bottom, and then I'm going to add some purple. So the way I'm doing it on this particular one, adding the colors, is just pouring them on top of each other and kind of creating a almost like a target-looking thing. In the end, the smallest color will be the, um, you know, at the end of the target, or the smallest dot on the target, put it that way. Um, so anyways, I have a bunch of purples, and two of them are probably very similar to each other, but I'm going to go ahead and put them next. So that's a really light purple on top of the dark purple. And then I have a, another purple, which may be an in-between. I should take the caps off first. Um, let's see how that works. Maybe the same color. No, it is in between. Perfect. So, kind of have a lilac and lavender and a great purple. Um, I think I'm going to put a little blue in there because I think purple and blue looks beautiful together. That's one of my favorite color combinations. Ooh, this is kind of turquoisey too, so that should be interesting. I don't have a lot of this, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. The thing is with, um... With a canvas that's 16 by 20, you're going to end up needing, there's some bubbles in there, and I'm going to show you about, I don't have a torch, a lot of people use torches to get rid of bubbles. I do have a, um, it's, it's kind of like a blow dryer, but it's made for like removing varnish from furniture and things like that, so I'm going to use that and hopefully get rid of some of those air bubbles. So I'm just going to keep doing layers like this. Um, I was starting to say that on a 16 by 20 canvas, you're going to end up needing probably a cup and a half of paint altogether to totally cover the canvas and not, um, don't worry about that dripping on there because it's going to all be poured on top of anyway. Um, in order to cover your canvas without running out, you don't want to run out. 
because when you run out, then you got to go back and bake more, and you might mess up your pour. You can always fix it, but it's just better not to run out. So that's what I'm doing is just going back and forth, kind of putting dots on top of each other like this. Oops, sorry about that turquoise down there. It'll all work out in the end. Um, I'm trying to show you, so I don't usually um, make that many messes, but it'll be fine. All right, so I'm only getting like a half a cup here. I think I can move it in like this and just keep going back and forth with the colors. Or I can go, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do some diagonal lines on the canvas. I'm going to do like two or three of these. And in the end, when I move it, you'll see how it all comes out. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and do the lines. I'm going to quickly do another one because I don't want to, uh, to settle too much. Well, you do have a lot of room to move with these things. It takes a while for them to actually settle, so you don't have to worry about it sitting there for a couple minutes and just looking like a blob, because you'll see when it starts to come out how different it's going to look. Um, I think I might be okay with two of these vertical lines. I want to do vertical because I want it to look like kind of like flowers on top. Again, abstract. Think abstract. Um, just the idea of flowers popping up from the grass on the bottom. And getting closer to finishing up this paint here. I'm going to go ahead and add some more. I'm doing another, another cup full here. Finishing up all this purple. And nothing has to be exact. There's, there's different ways you can... Um, like, to get those zigzags that I did up there, I can show you how I basically, on the, some of those other paintings, how I did that. You're basically just doing, like, a hatch kind of thing, like, back and forth, back and forth, and then the other color going this way. There's so many different techniques. Yeah, well, this has come out kind of thick, but yeah. You can do, like, hatch things that gives you that kind of wiggle thing. This is going to be very abstract, so um, I'm not trying to get one particular exact thing. I'm kind of doing a mixture of things here, so I'm not worried about it too much. Um, but if you watch a lot of the videos that are on YouTube, you will find that there are some very tech, some very um, exact techniques that will give you more an exact look that you're trying to get. And like I said, I am new at this too, but you're going to see in a minute how fun this can be because it really is hard to not make a beautiful painting doing this. I'm just going to go ahead and move this now and show you how it all sort of changes. And this is looking to me right now more like a... Hmm. Not getting the maybe I should have done the zigzag. <laughs> it's more like a wave than it does uh, flowers. But uh, let me see how I can do this here. Oh, that's right. Now that I think of it. This can be just more like a wave because the flowers are going to, the balloon is going to create the flowers. I forgot about that. Sorry, I am talking as I'm going and playing and experimenting. You know what? I forgot to do the silicone again. I might just spray some on afterwards. I was thinking about spraying it on the paint this time instead of spraying, spraying it on the, uh, I'm just pouring this back and forth. You can see that it's starting to create what looks like more like waves or the ocean, which is not what I'm trying to do. Eventually it's going to, but that's um, kind of the background. And then you'll see what the balloon does with the flowers to make it, to make it work. So my paint is a little thicker, I think, than I thought it was going to be. It's really not pouring as fast as I thought it would. So might have made it just a little too thick but it's all good because there is no really 
it's hard to mess these up and just ruin it. It takes a lot to ruin it. So you just go with it. I wish I, I wish you could see more what I'm doing. I'm going. All right, so I don't know where my video left off because, uh, like I said, I've never done this on video, so I kind of got lost in all that. But I am loving the way this turned out. Uh, hopefully, I can get bits and pieces of that video to show you how I did it. But the cool thing about this whole acrylic pour thing is that nothing ever comes out the same. They are truly originals, and you can't even reproduce it. So don't try to figure out exactly how someone else d did it. Just get ideas from them, and then have some fun. Right now, I'm just dipping these little areas that, for some reason, well, actually, I know what the reason is. It was because of the silicone. They just did not want to stick. So, I don't want to leave them with no paint on them. It'll just be raw canvas. So, I'm just filling in these little spots here and there. And then... I did actually, I don't know if you saw it, because I think the video ran out, but I did actually spray on top with a little silicone on this. And you can see what it did right there. It made these starburst, actually. Um, that particular stuff does not seem to be doing much with, um, with uh, cells. So, you don't see a lot of cells in this, but... Except for the little ones, which looks awesome in that glitter paint. So, <laughs> I love that. But, this is really cool. I love this. So, again, I don't know how much you saw in the video, but I can tell you that when I did the, the red and the purples, it was just looking too red to me. So, all I did was poured some dots of yellow, probably about the size of a dime. And then I took my balloon and my water balloon and I just pressed it down and that's what I got is these beautiful flowers which reminds me I can put the beads in maybe too if I want and then I went and then I went down and swiped this grass with a I talked about using a paint um I don't know what you call those things those paint oh you can definitely see cells in here the things you get at the store when you're looking for paint colors. There you go. Now those are nice cells. See now that's the thing about this too is as it dries you'll see more. So now these cells are definitely coming out. This is amazing. I'm so excited. This is so awesome. I love the windswept kind of like the wind is blowing upwards and the flowers are just kind of blowing in the wind and there's the glitter and I'm not going to put those beads in this. This is just too pretty as it is. Here I did the balloon where I just mixed the two the colors with the green just to you know, throw a little of that green in there. Up there too. So it just is kind of uniform now all around the painting. So from the top, uh, that is what it looks like. Uh, except for that stupid light that is shining on. Let me see if I can turn that off if you can still see it. Uh, there you go. Well, now you got the shadows from the, the window outside, but uh, when it's done, I will do another video before 